Hey guys, Miss Peterson here, and this is a physics lecture on wave properties for my physics in the universe classes. So, what is a wave? Okay, we'll talk about two types of wave, but any wave is just a periodic oscillation that moves energy from one place to another. Now, when we say oscillation, all we mean is moving back and forth. So for sound waves, these are always created by vibrating objects. Um, if you're making a wave on a slinky, you can make a transverse wave by moving your hand up and down, okay? Uh, or a longitudinal by moving it back and forth. Both of these waves are mechanical waves. Mechanical waves are any wave where the actual matter itself is oscillating or vibrating back and forth as that wave goes through. So for these two waves, both of the waves are traveling in this direction, okay, for both of these. But for the transverse wave, if you were to focus in, say, on this part of the slinky, this part of the slinky would just be moving up and down right in that area, okay? The matter moves perpendicular to that wave direction where in a longitudinal wave like this, okay, if we were, say, to focus on this part of the slinky, as that wave moves through, it would seem to be moving that way, okay, parallel to the direction of the wave. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So, we do need some vocabulary around waves. Uh, first one is the crest. So, all of the crests are the high points of the wave. Now, in a longitudinal wave, these are the compressions, okay? Now, at the bottom of the wave then, oops, at the bottom of the wave, okay, we have our troughs or low points, okay? On your longitudinal waves, these are the expansions. Sometimes you'll see them called the rare factions. Okay, so compression, rare faction, crust, and trough. Okay, those are two of the characteristics. Now, we call this line in the middle the equilibrium line, and it's basically, say this was a string, okay, where the string would be if there were not a wave going through it. Um, we will often measure the wavelength of the wave, which we could measure from crest to crest. We could also measure wavelength, though, from trough to trough. Or we could measure it from equilibrium line up through crest, through trough, and back to equilibrium line. <clears throat> All three of these measurements would give you an accurate measure of that wavelength. Okay. Um, and for wavelength, when we use it in equations and such, it gets the symbol lambda, okay? That is a Greek lowercase lambda, not a W. It gets a lambda. It just does. So any of these measurements would give you the wavelength. And then the last piece of vocabulary around just describing and looking at the wave is the amplitude, Okay, now amplitude, think height of wave. And that one will always be measured from the equilibrium line. Okay, so not the total height of the wave, like crest to trough, but rather the um, height of it from the equilibrium line. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Notice, though, I haven't talked about any of the timing of waves, okay? And we do need to talk about the timing of waves. There are two variables that we use for that. The first one is the period, which uses a capital T. Period is easiest to think about. It is just the time for one wave. Normally, it's in units of seconds, but it could be in other time units like minutes or hours. Um, and yeah, it's just how much time one wave or one cycle or one oscillation takes. Now, frequency 
we tend to use more. Because most of our waves, whether they're sound waves or light waves, they're going to go by really, really fast, okay? So we talk about the frequency, which is how many waves there are per second, okay? So waves per second, cycles per time. The units that we use for frequency is the hertz. The frequency of bad physics jokes hurts. Uh, but uh, a hertz is just a wave per second. It is one per second, which if we wrote it out in units, it would be one over s, which is a little funky. So sometimes you'll see it as s to the minus one, which means one over s. But again, we just use hertz for that, hz. Now, if we look at these equations real quick, t equals one over f, period, equals one over frequency, and frequency equals one over the period. You can think of the period as the time per cycle, per cycle, and the frequency is the cycles per time. How would you describe that? Okay. They're inverses of each other. Or reciprocals, if you will. So if you know one, you always know the other. Now with wave speed, there are two equations that we can use. The first is your classic speed equation. Okay, we got this one. Velocity is equal to x, which we use for distance over time. Okay, whenever we're using this e equation, uh, our units can be pretty much whatever we need, whatever makes sense in the context of our problem. But the standard units for velocity are meters per second, for distance is meters, and for time in seconds. Now this equation is also for the velocity, but it looks a little different, okay? Here we have the velocity. And remember, this is the Greek letter lambda, which we use for wavelength. So you can also think of velocity as the wavelength times the frequency. Okay. Now for these ones, again, the typical units of velocity are meters per second. Our wavelengths will typically be in meters, and then our frequency is in hertz. But we remember that a hertz is equal to a one over second. So when we have meters times one over second, it checks out. Okay. Now, something else that I also wanted to show you guys is okay, we have velocity equals wavelength times frequency. And then frequency is 1 over the period. So you could also think of this as the wavelength over the period. Wavelength over period, that's just the distance for a wave divided by the time for one wave. So these two equations are very similar. Okay. And again, that was just from putting 1 over t in for f. So now, let's look at an example. A ruby-throated hummingbird beats its wings at a rate of about 70 beats per second. Okay, so the first number oops, that they are giving us there is 70 beats per second. Okay, what is the frequency in hertz of the sound wave? So, let's think about it. Okay, 70 beats per second. Is that the frequency or the period? Is that telling us the time for one cycle or the cycles per time? Well, it's per second. It's 70 beats per second. So that number is indeed the frequency. Okay. Now, if we have the frequency, go ahead and write it like this. We could also find the period. The period would be 1 over 70, but it didn't ask us for that. Um, I'll plug it into my calculator anyways, though. You get 0 0.014 seconds, or sorry, yep, seconds. Um, okay. Oh, and also, since we have 70 beats per second, that will be 70 hertz. And then the second part of this says, assuming the sound wave moves with a velocity of 350 meters per second, okay, what is the wavelength of the wave? So 
I'm looking for the wavelength. Okay. Well, I know my velocity and I know my frequency and I want to know my wavelength. So the equation that I'm going to use is velocity equals frequency times wavelength. Because again, I know my velocity, I know my frequency, and I want to know my wavelength. Now, when we're solving problems, it is totally up to you if you want to algebra and manipulate the equation first or plug in numbers and then solve it out. In physics, we tend to manipulate first, so I'm going to do that. If I'm solving for the wavelength, I need to move this f to the other side. Okay, so I'm going to divide both sides by the frequency. It cancels out over here, and my equation becomes wavelength equals velocity divided by frequency. So... I'm looking for my wavelength, I know my velocity and frequency, so I'm ready to plug in my numbers. My velocity is 350 meters per second, and then my frequency is 70 hertz, which is 70 beats per second. So these seconds per seconds cancel out, and I have 350 divided by 70 meters, which I believe is 5. Yep, so... Five meters is our answer. Yep. Now, that was a pretty straightforward problem. Um, I didn't actually end up drawing a picture of it, but I was trying to make sense of what was going on in the problem. Anytime I solve a problem in physics, I use something called five-step solution. Basically, step one is to always draw a picture. Step two is to identify your variables and list your known and your unknown variables from what they give you in the problem. Then you pick an appropriate equation, okay? One that matches your list of variables and has the unknown that you're looking for. You do the math and you make sure your answer makes sense. Now, this is going to be really important because our problems aren't always super straightforward. Let's go ahead and look at the next example. And we'll use our five-step solutions to solve it. Ocean waves are observed to travel along the water surface during a developing storm. A Coast Guard weather station observes that there's a vertical distance from high to low point of 4.6 meters, okay, I'm going to go ahead and highlight all the numbers we get here, 4.6 meters and a horizontal distance of 8.6 meters between adjacent crests. The waves splash into the station once every, once every 6.2 seconds. Determine the frequency and speed of the waves. Okay, all right. so step one is to conceptualize, to draw a picture. There's a lot of information in this problem, so I want to simplify it down and make sure I really understand what they're telling me. I know I'm talking about waves, so I'm going to start by just drawing a wave. Yep. Now, it says there's a vertical distance of 4.6 meters between the high point and low point. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in my equilibrium line. And then the vertical distance between the crest and the trough, my wave is not drawn very symmetrically. Let me see if I can draw a better wave. More symmetrical wave. Yeah, slightly better. Okay. But the vertical distance between the crest and the trough is 4.6 meters. And there's a horizontal distance between adjacent crests of uh, 8.6 meters. Okay. And then it says the waves splash into the station once every 6.2 seconds. Okay, so once per 6.2 seconds, or one wave is 6.2 seconds. Is that telling you the frequency or the period? Okay. If you said period, you are correct. That is telling us the time for one wave. That is going to be the period. So T is 6.2 seconds. Now, it wants us to determine the, uh, the frequency and the speed. So... First off, it gives us the distance between adjacent crests. I know that that is the wavelength, so I'm going to add that to my list of variables. The wavelength is uh, the wavelength is for 8.6 meters. And then this 4.6 meters we could use to help us determine the amplitude. 
which would be half of that. Okay, the amplitude would be 4.6 divided by 2, which is 2.3 meters. Okay. So we have our period, we have our wavelength, and now we have our amplitude. And we want to know frequency. So I do have an equation of this. I remember that frequency is just the inverse of the period. Okay, so if waves take um, are coming once every 6.2 seconds, the time of one wave is 6.2 seconds. So the frequency is how many waves we have per second. Okay, frequency is 1 over t. So I can plug in my variables, 1 over 6.2 seconds to get that my frequency is 0 0.16 hertz. Okay, I want two digits in there because all my other answers had two digits. So there we go, 0.16 hertz. Now I know my frequency and I know my wavelength. So I can use that to calculate the speed. Velocity equals wavelength times frequency. So I can plug in my numbers. Wavelength being 8.6 meters, and my frequency as I just calculated is being 1.6 hertz or 1.16 waves per second. So we get a speed of about 1.376, which I would round and say 1.4 meters per second. And again, my calculator put, spit out 1.376. But we want to round because of precision. And that's how we do wave problems. Okay, cool. Okay, cool.